Hello friends, this is Manoj Goyal from the Wall Street School. At the Wall Street, we have placed more than 4,000 students in the various fields of finance, such as valuation, equity research, and investment banking. Friends, one of the most important topics for the students who are planning to build career in the finance miss out on is credit research. That's why we have prepared this video to dig into detail of this most important topic of finance. So what we are going to cover in this video, what exactly is the credit research? How credit research is different from the equity research? What qualifications and experience is required to become a credit analyst? And what sort of companies and industries are hiring credit analysts? And the most important, what sort of salaries you can expect as a credit analyst? So we are going to cover everything in detail in this video. So let's begin. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you are fit, fine and safe and are doing amazingly well. In today's video, we'll be talking about credit research. Firstly, I'll be telling you what exactly is credit research because there are many people who even don't understand this term. Then we'll be talking about how is it exactly different from equity research because many people are aware of this term equity research, but they exactly don't know what's the difference between equity research and credit research. Then we'll be talking about the industry in which a credit analyst is required and his job roles. Then we'll be talking about educational qualifications that are needed to become credit analyst and the skills that you should acquire. And finally, the salary of credit analyst in India, right? This is going to be a very straightforward video. So let us start. In total, there are four types of financial risk, market risk, credit risk, operational risk and liquidity risk. In today's video, we are going to focus on this credit risk. So credit risk can be subdivided into five parts. The first one is default risk. Simply saying, if someone has given a loan to third party, if that third party defaults in repaying back, that is called as default risk. Migration risk. Migration risk means when you gave a loan to a person, he was say triple A rated. But because of certain events happening in the economy or with that particular person, his credit rating migrated from triple A to let's say triple B. So this is a risk. When you gave the loan, he was less riskier. Now he is currently more riskier than what he was. Counterparty risk, that is the third party to whom you have given the loan will not be able to satisfy his obligations. Recovery risk, that is in the case of default, how much amount you'll be able to recover? Will it be 100% uh, like no recovery at all? Or you'll be able to recover some amount? And then concentration and correlation risk. This is something many banks in India are facing. Like uh, because of like IDFC bank is facing concentration and correlation risk. Correlation risk is when something bad happens in the economy, there is not only one company that will default. Many companies will default. So because of one bad thing happening, default is clustered that is called as correlation risk and concentration risk is suppose your total loan distributed is 10 lakh out of it you have given 8 lakh rupees loan to a single party and then 20,000 rupees loan to remaining 10 parties so this is concentration risk that is if one person defaults majority of your loan book will be destroyed right so within credit risk you have all these five sub segments now let us talk about what exactly is credit research. Credit research means assessing the credit risk in relation to any borrower and or instrument. That is you are assessing all these five, zero, uh, five risks that we discussed on the last slide in relation to any particular instrument or in any particular borrower. Instrument means a bond, a short term loan or a particular company that is borrower, right? So what are the factors that affect that research process? of analyzing or assessing someone's risk. So there are two aspects involved to it. The first one is expected losses. You assess the probability of default, like AAA rated companies are considered to be very less risky because their probability of default is very less. Their interest coverage ratios and all are really high. But junk bonds or the companies that are doing very uh, not doing very well, the probability of default is very high, right? The company with high leverage, the probability of default is much higher then loss given default. If default happens, 
how much amount you will be able to not recover like if default is happening you will be able to recover say 30 percent of the amount so 70 percent of the amount you are not able to recover this is called as loss given default and exposure at default whatever is the loan outstanding that is your entire exposure whatever amount you have to collect from the person to whom you have given the loan that is the exposure at default so this is measuring expected losses and then you measure unexpected losses there are various statistical models used for this one one and very popular is var value at risk then you have estimated shortfall stress testing and reverse stress testing and scenario analysis i'll give you summary of var and estimated shortfall these two are self explanatory var let's say as per some statistical model there is 95% probability the loss will be 1 lakh rupees under a normal condition for a particular year so within one year you can lose 1 lakh rupees of amount and there is a 95% probability attached to it or another way to say this is there is a 5% probability your losses will be more than 1 lakh rupees this is var value at risk estimated shortfall if in case loss exceeds this 1 lakh rupees how much it will be how much you expect it to be this is called as estimated shortfall now let us talk about how equity research and credit research are different the major and the most important difference depends upon their end goal see as an equity research analyst my goal is to determine whether a security is overvalued or undervalued but as a credit research analyst i am not really concerned whether it is overvalued or undervalued i am concerned whether i should be giving loan to the borrower or not what will determine whether I should be giving loan to a borrower or not? It's financial position to me. But as an equity research analyst, it's financial position matters to me. Oh. But more importantly, I'm really concerned with its growth potential. As an equity research analyst, my focus is long term because I'll be buying a share and will be keeping it for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? As an investor. But as a credit research analyst, I don't care about the company once I receive my money back. So if I have given a short term loan, I'm really concerned with short term future of the company. If I have given a long term loan, then only I'm concerned with long term future of the company, right? As a credit research analyst, I know my upside is limited. I will be only getting the return that are promised to me. So I'm more or less concerned with downside risk, right? And equity research people are more or less concerned with earnings growth and all that is upside uh, potential. So as an equity research your focus is upside your credit as a credit research analyst you are focusing on downside right so these are the basic differences between credit research and equity research profile obviously there are many minute differences like the tools used by them equity research analysts will be relying a lot on valuations credit research analysts will be relying a lot or will be projecting lots of cash flows so it really depends upon their profile but these are primary differences right now let us move ahead and talk about the industries in which a credit analyst is needed so firstly credit rating agencies need credit analyst what do they do there they prepare econometrics models with stress testing they do sovereign ratings and company ratings basically do give ratings to the companies and countries and they also track interest rate inflation and economic cycles and determine the impact of these on the credit ratings of other companies then you are needed in commercial banks obviously the role is very simple you have to do credit profiling whether a person is worth enough to give some credit or not you have to assess his credit worthiness and give him loan loan origination and then you have to do collateral assessment whatever security is giving against that loan and assess the quality of that collateral and you will have to see the covenants the conditions of the loan are being followed or not if in case there is a breach of any condition of the loan then what are the steps to be taken then in investment banking you do relative valuations of the bond so you need credit research analyst to do that you prepare lbo models so like when any lbo model is prepared lots of tranches of debt is used to finance that particular deal and you have to model cash flows very carefully so credit analysis is required there then investment banks need credit analyst for credit uh, cash flow modeling basically high yield and low yield bonds or distressed bonds and assets how much cash flows you can expect to be generated from these bonds you have to model that 
and for private credit like directly giving a loan to a person you need to do his screening whether he is eligible for loans or not many fintech apps are there nowadays like credit b and all that do these kind of work then you also monitor the performance they are uh, like if you are giving a loan to a company you need to see whether the company is generating sufficient cash flows or not you need to do management profiling whether the management is really uh, uh, clear and transparent about uh, their credit commitments then asset management companies they do cash flow modeling same as investment banks active management of investment portfolio so an portfolio a portfolio can have debt and equity securities within it along with some other asset classes so these debt securities are issued by various issuers various companies various governments so you need to keep track of their credit worthiness so that you can manage your portfolio very well you need to generate various investment ideas investment into uh, high yield bonds low yield bonds just to balance out that portfolio and then there are some arbitrage opportunities and creation of synthetic assets so arbitrage opportunities could be exploited between similarly uh, rated bonds but different yield provided by them or between cds spreads and you create synthetic assets basically a financial asset is created by not investing equal amount but that generates similar cash flows is called a synthetic assets so you need credit analyst there also okay now let us talk about the educational qualifications and the skills required to get into this domain while i was researching this video I was gathering data from internal sources. I was contacting uh, many people who could accumulate, like give me the inputs for preparing this video. And I was also browsing internet. So I came across this article, one very genuine article. Basically, this is an interview between Hindustan Times and Swati Agrawal, who back in the days, this interview is of around 2010, who back in the days was a regional director for care ratings. Now I think she is senior executive director for care ratings. So it was pinpointedly asked to her, can you pinpoint right qualifications for such kind of roles? He said, we look for MBA in finance or chartered accountants, along with it, some additional qualification like CFA and FRM. This can give you edge over other candidates in the job market, right? Then she was asked about BCom and BTech. If you want, I can attach the link to this article in the description below. I have received input from my internal sources also and as per them also, the world have become much more competitive. So you need MBA in finance or chartered accountancy. Along with it, you need some other qualification like CFA or FRM. Nowadays, another courses are becoming more popular like CCRA, Certified uh, Credit Research Analyst or some internal programs run by these credit rating agencies like Crystal, Moody's, Ikra, Fitch. So you can like enroll for their programs also, right? So these are the educational qualifications that are recommended to become credit analyst in India. What are the subjects that you should be having very good grip on? So accounting, in detail knowledge of accounting, mathematics, basic mathematics, statistics, higher you know better it is, economics, in detail knowledge and finance in detail knowledge. So basically you should have grip over all these five subjects. If in case you want to do really good in your profile. Okay. Now let us talk about the salaries that you can expect after earning this designation or after starting a job as a credit analyst. So let's talk the truth. We are not living in US based economy or some developed European economies where you can be expected to pay 30, 40, 50 lakh rupees per annum for this job role. On an average in India, you will be landing up with a job of 7 lakh rupees per annum. This is base salary, right? If you're really good, you may land up with say 10, 12 lakh package. If you are like, okay, you might end up with four or five lakh rupees package on an average, it will be around seven lakh rupees. And these are the name of the companies and on an average, how much they pay. So like Crystal pay around nine lakh rupees on lower side, it pays around three lakh on higher side, it pays to some people uh, till 15 lakhs also. But on an average it is around eight lakh, seven lakh, seven lakh, six lakh, 10 lakh, seven lakh, six lakh. You can see. Right. And if you go to say some bigger organizations that are multinational in nature, like JP Morgan, your pay scale will, incre will increase a bit, not very much by 15, 20 percent here and there. Right. So this is the truth. You cannot expect packages of 15, 20, 30 lakh rupees from the very day first. But as you progress in your career, like we were talking about Swati Agrawal from becoming regional director. Like she have worked in care ratings from almost 18 years. I checked her LinkedIn profile. So from starting from the very base level, now she have reached director level, right? So you can also do that. 
with that being said we are stopping for this video i hope you found this video very useful if in case you did please like this video and if in case you have any suggestion or queries please reach us to at the wallstreetschool.com or in the comment section below thank you